The second set of tools in your toolbox when you're working proofs, besides the traditional square of opposition, is conversion, obversion, and contraposition. So what these three are going to do is to take your standard form categorical propositions and move things around within them so that you can get to where you need to go doing proofs. So conversion will switch the subject and predicate terms. So for example, if I had all S or P and I used conversion, and I'm just gonna use an arrow, that's not an official thing to do. I'm just showing you what I'm doing. You don't need to write the arrow. It switches the subject and predicate term, meaning it switches their places. So it becomes all P, R, S. So again, now the S is in the predicate position and becomes the predicate term. The P is in the subject position and becomes the subject term. This is why we avoid using P and S because the subject term and predicate term are not static. They're just about where they're located in the standard form categorical proposition. So that's just a reminder. Obversion and contraposition both do two things and you have to do both. You cannot only do one and neglect the other. You can't cherry pick. You have to do both of these or if you're doing contraposition, you have to do both of these. So obversion will change the quality, um, meaning the all to no, or the no to all, or the some are to some are not. I know we called that the quantity earlier, but here we mean the quality as in it's all of something or none of something, or some are or some are not. And it's also going to replace the term that's in the predicate position only with its term complement. Now, what is a term complement? Well, a term complement, according to the definition in your book, is the word or group of words that denotes the class complement. But really what we're talking about is adding or taking away the word non. And you can think about it this way. The reason it makes sense is if I were to ask you, okay, here's the category of dogs. Every type of dog fits into this category. Anything that you could call a dog fits into the category of dogs. Now ask yourself, what's outside of that category? Hmm, well, everything that is not a dog. But we don't wanna write everything that's not a dog. That's too difficult to do. So let's erase that, everything that's not a dog. That's complex. We're just gonna say non-dogs. So non-dogs becomes its own term, dogs, non-dogs. And if we were looking at dogs as D, it would become non-D with a little slash between it. So if I were to apply both of those movements in a version to an A statement, It would become, again, ignore the arrow, I'm just sort of showing you where I'm going with this. I would replace the all with no. I would leave the subject term alone. I would leave the copula alone as well, but my P would be replaced with non P. So if I worked a version on the A statement, it would become no S or non P. Now contraposition, switches the places of the subject and predicate terms, but it then replaces both of them with their term complements. So if I were to work a version on all SRP, it would become all non-P are non-S. Because what I did was I switched their places so that the predicate term is here and the subject term is here, and I added a non to both of them. Now, if you started off with a non, you would take away a non in order to replace something with its term complement. And we will use these three, again, in conjunction with the rules that you learned with the traditional square of opposition to work proofs. So return to this video when you need to be reminded of conversion, obversion, and contrapositions.